All right, so now all we got to do is desolder these two cables, and uh, then we'll flip it around to the back, and we should be able to just unscrew these two screws and pull out the power entry module. So let's do that. Since it was difficult to actually unsolder those twisted in wires on the back of the plug, I actually just cut them with this, and uh, my wire cutters. So having got those cut, now I should just be able to do the old unscrew from the back side. And our module just comes out like that. Okay, so that's that's really all there is to that. Now, again, for the sake of reference, these are the receptacles I ordered. And let's take them out. And you'll see that they actually look very reminiscent. And um, when I install them, I like to do the, hey, look at that, perfect fit. Huh? Isn't that great? Um, whenever I go to install any of these, what I'll generally do, because I always forget, is it, you know, what's the, what's the polarity on that? I'm just having a look here. Yeah, that is, as I remembered, Space Invaders Bunker. See? Yeah, that's right, Space Invaders. Okay, so, uh, again, that's another one of my 80s references, kids. Hope you guys, uh, get it? I'm not trying to be ironic. I'm just generally old. <laughs> okay, so I'm using a swab with some IPA here, and I'm just cleaning the outside like that. To use the other side, take it away. Swab like so. And, you know, I don't seem to have any paper towels handy, so I'll just use my fingers to dry it off. And we'll put the uh, module back in. And then the screws back in. Isn't that great? I mean, the, the tabs are identical. So if you order that part, you are guaranteed to have a complete drop-in replacement. Which is a lovely thing. Now, there's the, the screw holes here are actually countersunk on the original and they are not on the Roland I'm sorry on the replacement so what you're gonna see here is after you tighten a little bit they're gonna be poking out a little bit but that's really not a big deal cosmetic purely cosmetic okay so that's that I'm gonna just flip around and we'll solder in the new wire all right so let's uh, cut this tie here that's in the way Once again, I'm trying to do the job with the camera rolling, which means that it's either going to go out of focus or I'll make mistakes because I'm not as close to the work as I'd like to be. Uh, I should also point out here that this Juno has not been powered up for like a week. So I can have my hands in close to this transformer and these capacitors without any fear at all. Power supply will typically um, have big capacitors on them and those big capacitors can indeed um, pack a hell of a wallop if you're not careful so uh, my warning is of course if, if your unit's just been on uh, just give it a couple days to discharge give it a day to discharge or at least 30 minutes again if you kill yourself I'm not responsible that's my liability uh, disclaimer right there. If you decide to follow my instructions, remember I'm only providing them as a reference to people who already are qualified to do the work. So if you feel unqualified to do the work, don't think watching this YouTube video is qualifying you. All right. Okay. Disclaimers complete. I'm just stripping down this existing wire so that we have that. And I'm thinking actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the... Okay, so this one's going to go over here on this side. This one's going to go over here on this side. Um, this is actually a nice wire. It's already recorded. And again, does it matter which way, which one goes where? It actually doesn't because this is AC, alternating, alternating current. So 
uh, just the black and the white don't have the same kind of polarity rules that you have with DC, which you really do have to get them right, otherwise the whole thing gets wrecked um, when you power it up. Okay, let's see here. Get myself a screwdriver. Uh, sorry, uh, pliers. What I normally do with this kind of work, I'm not this clumsy or fo unfocused, it's just that you know, trying to do it with a camera rolling is <laughs> it's like trying to talk and chew gum, I don't know, walk and chew gum, <laughs> ride a unicycle and juggle. The lighting's not the best right now either. Typically I'll shine a light in there and uh, okay. These guys just have to be twisted in enough for the soldering iron to, to do its job. Um, all right. This guy over here. Right on. Okay, that took longer than I wanted, but now we have this guy, and we want to route him to this socket over here. So I'm going to go get my socket uh, driver so that I can unscrew this and basically what I have in mind is I've got another piece of wire and I have some terminal rings and I'll be showing them to you shortly but or I'll show them to you now. This is a terminal ring here from a local hardware store and um, <clears throat> let's see put the package and see if these are the right size. I had to guess I grabbed a couple of them uh, different sizes that right? That's just a little bit, just a little bit too, too small. Um, but I do have some slightly larger ones and some really larger ones. These ones are really larger. Um, so I guess the slightly larger ones are the ones I'm going to use these guys over here. All right. And uh, I'll just get one of them out. Get one of them out and check it out. So we got the the ring, and uh, then I got some. These are actually crimp crimp terminals. You actually use a, a crimping tool to crimp them in place. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to saw them in place. And yeah, that fits just perfectly. So uh, these ring terminals here are number six stud, as they call themselves. A number six stud, 22-18. AWG, uh, number six stud. So, we'll be right back. This is the preparation. Here's the wire I got. Um, this is something I've cannibalized off of something somewhere. Once upon a time, and put it in my wire drawer, but you could get some wire from the hardware store. Just make sure it's a good heavy gauge, because you really want a heavy gauge wire for your ground. And uh, here is the, the ring terminal. And basically, all I'm going to do with the ring terminal is I'm going to just pull, discard the plastic sleeve, and then I'm going to thread the plastic sleeve. And as you can see here, this is actually a little bit longer than it needs to be. Um, you could do one of either way, but since I've got it longer, and I don't really care about this being bigger, going to fold it back like so and uh, as I mentioned these are crimp terminals I'm just going to crunch it a little bit with my pair of pliers for a bargain basement crimping but that's not good enough for me I'm also going to solder this as well so that's up next. Okay, here's our uh, cut piece of wire, and I've stripped off the end here. So now really all i got to do is take my soldering iron and a little bit of my heavier gauge solder wire. Let me just grab some of that, and I apologize for the autofocus follies. Okay. I miss my... Uh, 
I miss my smoke extractor at this point. All right, there. And we'll go over here to the other side. And uh, hopefully the smoke alarm does not go off while we're doing the video. Okay, so that is now tinned. Always tin your wires. Very important. Okay, I'm putting that back in the holder. Get rid of the piece of protective cardboard. And then we're going to open this up. We got some more soldering to do inside. Um, over here. There we go. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit better. Uh, problem with zooming in too close, of course, is that we end up getting autofocus nightmares going on. So uh, I'm just going to use my socket over here. To loosen this guy. Hopefully I've got enough room to do so. A little bit tight, but might have been better with the screwdriver handle attachment. I may be having an issue yeah, clearance. Clearance, always a problem with clearance. A moment. That's what this guy is for. This thing. Okay. Extend. What is this? Oh, there's a screw stuck in the end of it. <laughs> oh, brother. There was a um, a screw stuck in the end of that socket, so no wonder it wasn't going in properly. Sorry about that. All part of the fun and games of doing this live without nets. Okay. All right. Now this is going to be able to turn without any issues. Okay, and of course you get to a certain point and the screw on the outside really wants to be held back too, so normally I would have just have a screwdriver on the back side and get this done in no time flat, but you know, here we are making a video for you guys. And typically the video process interferes with the process itself of fixing it. Okay. There we go. Probably did not make much of a easy to see situation, but okay. I'll put the the nut over there. Right, so this is of course the the grounding wire from the actual transformer, and here is the one that we just soldered up. So we just put the two of them over the top there. I apologize for the poor lighting. Once again, when we go onto cable TV, I'll be sure to uh, get the proper lighting included in on our budget along with the cameraman. I'm sure some cable station somewhere would be interested in this. Synth world, synth world. Keyboard time, excellent. I'm hoping you guys got that one. That's from the 90s. All right, let's see. Okay, so now I'm changing the direction of the torque, the driver. once you start to get tight enough these guys start swipping around and you don't want them to be doing that not if you have a particular preferred orientation for the, the final product apologize again for the autofocus follies yeah it's 
really not super tightening because of the screw spinning on the back side so I'll have to tighten that a little bit more later but there it is with our ring connector now and basically at this point all I got to do is feed the ground wire through and use some pliers to again I apologize for the autofocus and the low lighting and all the other non-professional things that are going on here this is the reason why usually I'll just go oh and I did this and I did that as opposed to actually showing you guys live what's going on all right so Let's have a looky here. This wire popped out while I was doing that. Okay. Okie doke, I'd say we are ready now to solder these dudes. Uh, this is one here is a little bit long um, now that I've twisted it in place. So I'm just going to cut the end off, taking great care not to cut my finger or not to cut the actual main wire in the process. There we go. Okay, let's get some solder wire and solder this up. It's going to Probably generate a, a bit of smoke, but that's okay. Hope the fire department doesn't come. Actually, I'm say, I should say, if the place catches fire, I hope the fire department comes, but <laughs> we'll take great care not to have a false alarm here. You don't want to get too crazy with the soldering iron because while well, you do want it soldered in, you don't want to be melting the, the plug because you just couldn't stop soldering. All right. That's, uh, that's looking good. So now, shut the lid on this guy. Pull back. There's your IEC plug for your Juno 106. Alright, next up, we got a key bed to clean. <laughs> 